check everything about geology of Saudi Arabia and started again continue generating various type of maps. Of course, those, the members of the committee from different organization of the, from universities and government agencies. Let's talk about geology of Saudi Arabia. What we'd like to know about geology of Saudi Arabia? Actually, Saudi Arabia is an open book or a textbook geology. What do you need is there. It's a, an open geopark. This is a stratigraph column. We got everything there. We got the metallic, non-metallic minerals. We got different type of sandstone, thermal, oil, gas, and geotourism. This is all in geology of Saudi Arabia. Look at this. We got the igneous rocks, granite, granodiorite, gabbro, name it, you got it, schist, metamorphic rock, schist, gneiss, and so on. It's there. Sedimentary rocks, as I said, we have the various types of sedimentary rocks. Folds, folds, all type of structures. All what you see in textbooks of geology, you find it there in the field. Plate tectonic, wow. Tectonic of Saudi Arabia is best example to show the boundaries of tectonic. We'll talk about this. Fossils from micro, tiny fossils, all the way to elephants, all the way to dinosaurs were discovered in Saudi Arabia. As I said, from 2,400 million years old rocks all the way to recent, it is there. As I said, all geologic ages from Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, Carboniferous, Permian, and so on up to recent are represented in outcrops. All environment, as you know, that sedimentary rocks are deposited in different environments. It is there. You need continental, it is there. You need marine, you need transitional, you need whatever you need, it is there. It's a textbook, as I said, geology. When we talk about plate tectonics, the globe is formed of more than about 16 earth plates. And here is the Arabian plate, recently separated from the African plate. Africa is broken and will be broken into various types of plates. Small plates, bigger plates, and this is the Arabian plate. Look at this, well-defined boundary. This is the Arabian plate. Why we are talking about plate? Tectonic plates or tectonism is the main key of geology. Geology is the main part of mineralogy or mineralogical exploration. So tectonics is very essential part of the geology and mining. The Arabian Shield. You see the Arabian Shield now as a one segment, but it is formed of different terrains, different pieces, arches, microplates, and along the boundaries of these plates, whether Asir, uh, Jeddah, Hijaz, Median, Hail, Afif, uh, Dawadmi, Arrain, and so on, these plates, at the boundary, there are suture zones where the two plates or the two terrain, terrains meet, there are suture zones. Mineralization took place there. So it is very important to know and understand the tectonics of the shield, the tectonics of the sedimentary cover, 
in order to know the mineralization zone where in the shield. And also it's important to know the tectonics, to know the sedimentary rocks where the oil and gas and water and other minerals there. Again, this is the, if you look at Landsat, you see there is a boundary. This is a, a sort of boundary. This is a boundary. These are Oman Mountains, Zagros, Tauros, Aqaba, Dead Sea, uh, Fault. So this area is called the Arabian Plate. So we have a very well-defined rock unit called the Arabian Plate. Wow, Arabian Plate is moving away from Africa. Two centimeters a year. Geologically, it's running fast. Maybe two centimeters for us, it is nothing, but by years, it is running away. During its run, it is colliding with the Iran Iranian plate, with the Turkish plate, with the Mediterranean, East Mediterranean plate. And along these boundaries, earthquakes happen due to the movement, due to the hitting of the Arabian plate to other plates. What about the center? It is safe. Anyway, this is a cross section of the Arabian plate. Africa, Red Sea, Arabian Shield, Arabian Shelf, Arabian Gulf, and Zagros Mountain. This is a cross section showing how is the Arabian Plate is pushing and forming the mountains there. And of course, earthquakes. The Arabian, the Arabian Peninsula occupies most of the Arabian Plate. The Arabian Plate in gray, the Arabian Peninsula covers most of the part, most, most of it, and Saudi Arabia is covering most of, of the Arabian Peninsula. So we are having the most part of the Arabian Plate. The movement of the Arabian Plate is the main factor in shaping our topography, coasts, plateaus, mountains, wadis, and coast. This is caused by or a result of the tectonic movement. So we have to understand the tectonics in order to explain the topography, the geology, and whatever there in natural resources. Geology is formed of that. Plate tectonics. Wow, what's this? Due to the movement, different structures were formed. What's the value of these structures? They are the places of natural resources. Minerals, oil, gas, and so on. These structures, with their arches, basins, plateaus, salt basin, and so on, these are the main factors of accumulation of natural resources. We have to understand and we, to know, we have to know about the tectonics affecting this. Look at this. We said the Arabian Plate is moving and pushing toward east and northeast, pushing the Iranian Plate, pushing the Turkish Plate, causing the earthquakes. And what about inland, inside the structures of, this is the boundary of the plate. What's in here from Oman? all the way northwest to southeast Turkey, the major oil and gas fields. Look at this. Here we have earthquakes, and inside we have the oil and gas.
as a result, we have accumulation or many aquifers, water aquifers in Arabia. We have the mineralized zones, all different type of minerals are formed within the Arabian plate, within the major part in Saudi Arabia. Again, it's a result of tectonics. Oil and gas, as I said, we have the continuous column of sedimentary rocks, continental, marine, marine, and continental and marine rocks, where we have the oil and gas aquifer uh, reservoirs. This is again accumulated in due to the tectonic movement of the Arabian plate toward the northeast. Now, let's talk about the geological provinces of Saudi Arabia. We have at least six provinces, six different provinces. We have the Arabian Shield in pink. We have the Arabian Shelf, colorful bands. We have the Red Sea. We have the volcanic fields in red. We have Sabha, whether it's coastal or inland Sabha. It is there. And finally, we have the sand seas. Let's talk about them. Shield covers 630,000 square kilometers, a huge, large area, full of minerals, full of different type of rocks, different structures, terrains, different ages. This is in the Arabian Shield. Let's go back to the second one. That is the Arabian Shelf, sedimentary rocks. As I said, different type of rocks, carbonates, evaporites, clastic sandstone, and so on. These are where the oil and gas and water and other non-metallic minerals occur there. Red Sea, it's a very long coast with different basins. Each basin got its characteristics and its natural resources. Volcanic fields, we have at least 24 different harra or volcanic feed, field. These fields or these volcanic rocks are natural volcanic resources of different type of rocks and minerals. It occupies about 5% of Saudi Arabia. different type of volcanic rocks. Whether it's basaltic or comandite, this is, we have three very rare uh, volcanic rocks. That's comandite, al abya al beda and al mansef Very rare type of volcanic rocks. Usually volcanic rocks are black, but these are white due to the different nature of the basalt or the volcanic material. Volcanic tubes, when lava moves along the wadis, these tubes are formed. They are kilometers long. They are touristic attraction and can be used for other purposes, uh, per, uh, other, uh, purposes as well. Sabha, or salt marsh. We have at least 41 different type of Sabha, whether coastal or inland. They got salt, different type of salt, different type of marine. These are the Sabha. It can be used or exploited for different purposes. These are examples of Sabha. Sabha in land, 
Sabha within volcanoes, Sabha along the Rub al Khali or along the coasts. Sand dunes or sand seas, 635,000 square kilometers of sand, one third of Saudi Arabia. Sand, yes, sand. We have about six, 635 square kilometers of sand, different sign, sands, different colors. Look at this, red, white, gray, black. What does that mean? It means that we have mineral resources, we have heavy minerals, we have tili uh, titanium, we have zirconium, we have gold, we have different heavy minerals within these sands. Look at this. All these are different types I have collected from different parts of Saudi Arabia. Each one got its minerals. Glacial episode. At the Arabian plate, during its geologic journey, journey through time, moved from the north there down to equator, down all the way down to southern pole, and going up into its present day. In blue are the glacial episodes where the Arabian Peninsula or Arabian Plate was covered by glacial environment, by glaciation. At least seven glacial episodes were identified in Saudi Arabia. That's making it, making Saudi Arabia, is the best example or one of the best examples in the world to study these glacial episodes. The glacial episode, seven, four in the Proterozoic, here, in the Precambrian, one in late Ordovician, one in the Permacarboniferous, and one in the Pleistocene. In order to study this carefully, I have to visit Antarctica two times, all the way south, to check these outcrops with the recent glacial environment. Glacial episodes or glacial deposits are well exposed in Tabuk Basin, Wadiyam Basin, Wajid Basin, Northwest Yemen, and in Oman. And I was, alhamdulillah, lucky to discover the youngest glacial episode in Midian Basin. That's making the whole um, uh, glacial episode represented in Saudi Arabia. Of course, this is the glacial striation, pavements, till light on the shield, in Wadi Dawasir, and in Midian. Excellent example. Clear evidences of glaciation. Typical examples of uh, glacial evidences. Gas is seeping in Al Ghassim with the mixed with water and once the gas is released, you can flare it, it's flaring, and Ghassimi people call it the flaring water. The first oil concession ever granted was not in the eastern province, was in Midian, uh, sorry, in Farasan. Farasan, oil is seeping from the base of the Red Sea and was collected by the people there and the first concession was granted in year 1910 uh, in this area, in Sajid. That's on the surface. What about uh, underground? What about underground cavities? Duhul. You have something there. It is dangerous to go. It is very risky. People go there, never come back. They get lost. 
they get killed, they got poisonous gases, and so on. That is the underground underground caves. But once you go there, you find very nice stalactite, stalagmite, and other deposits in different shape, like Magat Jaita in Lebanon. Conclusions. Wherever you go in Saudi Arabia, there is a geologic attraction, mineralogical, touristic, uh, uh, geomorphological, and so on. It's a great geology. Alhamdulillah, I put together many geologic uh, information in these types of posters, each poster you know, to, uh, <coughs> covering different aspects of geology, stratigraphy, uh, mineralogy, uh, oil, gas, water, and so on, and they are waiting for you in our Saudi geologist booth. Water, gas, oil, and name it. It is there. In Saudi Arabia, we are inspiring the world because we have Mecca and Medina. We are enriching the world by oil and gas and petrochemicals. And in the future, when minerals are needed, inshallah, we will be there. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum. So it's not the end. Um, I would love to ha take uh, Dr. Laboon in uh, a brief discussion, an interesting topic about Saudi uh, geology. He will be my guest for 10 minutes. And we will open the discussion while the room is uh, small. So we will give you the leverage of that. If any one of you have a question, uh, you can just raise hand to me and the team will help you to um, to ask. First of all, it's my honor, Dr. Um, Abdul Aziz, to, to have you today. Smart and it was too. so interesting. And you know, when I met Dr. Uh, Abdul Aziz Al Laboon before um, uh, a while, when we launched our um, NGD, and let me introduce myself. I'm uh, Rana Zumai, the head of corporate communication and knowledge at Saudi Geological Survey. And uh, when we host him, uh, when we launched the NGD, he said to me something very inspiring, make me very curious person about the geology. And to serve this geologist, uh, scientific people, and it's really honor and a responsibility. I hope I will do it in a good way. Uh, he said, you as a human runner, you have a geology in your body. So that was make me curious while is my bachelor in science and my master in corporate communication. So this combination make the country choose me today to play this role and again, it's my honor. Actually, uh, doctor, um, the first question I wanna ask, what is a plate tectonic? Plate tectonic? Tectonic. Yes, so, plate tectonic. a new word on me. <laughs> plate tectonic is the major factor in geology, shaping up the geology. Everything in geology depends on the plate tectonics. Why? Plate tectonic is the movement of plates on the earth crust, either colliding, forming the mountains, or breaking and separating, forming the oceans and seas. They are causing the sea transgression, sea regression, uh, life on land, life on sea, uh, mineral accumulation, um, uh, oil and gas migration, and so on. So plate tectonics is the iron of, you can see, uh, uh, you can see.
not this one. For the people not geologists, this is very uh, important information, so you no, can understand no. what one. this kind of people talk, and uh, it's very benefits information. There are two files, one mine and the other one. Okay. This is very, very this useful. Is, that's what I mean. This is the... Anyway, tectonics is the major factor of... Uh, so, what about its role? When you move a plate toward another one and collide, they are forming the mountains and wadis and so on shaping up the structure of the plate. Look at this, for example, why we have coasts here along the eastern coast, and we have plateau, we have mountain, we have high escarpment. Why? Because Earth is moving. And again, geology, the same thing. It is formed by plate tectonic. That's plate tectonic. Actually, what is the most accessible mineral or mineral to be explored in, in Saudi Arabia? We saw the sand seas. One third of the kingdom is covered by sea, by sand. Different type of, I don't know if we can see the, that's gold, that's the plate. Okay. Different type of sands. Why we have different colors? Because we are having different minerals. It's the easiest thing to exploit. Go there to the sand and pick the minerals you need. Whether it's silica, zirconium, gold, heavy minerals, titanium, magnetite, it is there. Look at this different type of minerals. Look at this, seas along the red coast black, it's titanium. And we have the expert of the sand, Dr. Nabhan, Masha'Allah, and Dr. Mamish. Uh, we'll ask them later. <laughs> we'll not okay. go. Uh, behind me is the uh, map of this distribution of these sands. Rab'ul Khali, Jafura, Dahna, Nufud, great amount of sand with a great amount of minerals i know as a, as a simple person in, in in science that there is another uh, geology um content in saudi arabia while our land is is so rich than other than mineral what is it what is it's um another factor um geology in saudi the main factor as i said i i would like to emphasize on the plate tectonics why it is the key for exploration. It is the key for correlation between rock units. It is key to look for mineralized or mineralization zones. It is the key for the formation of the stratigraphic and structural traps when we look for oil and gas. So again, it is the key factor of studying the geology of any area, not Saudi Arabia, everywhere, tectonism. Okay. I would like to disturb Dr. Abdullah Nabhan uh, while he is my colleague in the SGS. Actually, um, uh, what you want to add, Dr. here? I know you have uh, rich things to, to add on what Dr. said about sand because I will give uh, to you the, the, the mic and you can take talk even from your seat. I, we have another one. Thank you, team. So. Uh, please reach our information in this side. Okay, uh, so, uh, thank you very much, Doctor, give this, uh, this talk. Actually, you talk about something is really interesting, place or deposit or black sand. So, actually, in Saudi Arabia, we have different mineral occurrences or place or deposit. If you are looking to the south of Saudi Arabia, it's approximately like 800 kilometers from here to the south. We, will, uh, we have uh, uh, this kind of minerals that have high concentration of heavy minerals, which is rich in ilmenite and magnetite. So this kind of placer 
uh, it's really important in economic. So if we think uh, uh, how can you use it in economic side. And it's really interesting. Thank you very much for looking for this kind of, of, of place or the visit or sand. And he said, uh, doctor said sand. That mean we have silica sand, which w and we have res uh, high, huge reserve of silica sand in Saudi Arabia with a high quality. Actually, it depends on the uh, SiO2, let's say uh, silicon. So the silicon in some, in some place, it's about like 99.8, and this is high quality. Very so, and if you see sand as a black sand, we have a place of deposit looking to the, along the uh, Red Sea coast in Saudi Arabia, we have place of deposit, which rich in elminite, as the professor said, and magnetite. And uh, we have mo uh, we we have detailed work in the same place. If you are looking to the southern part of the Red Sea, so uh, it's really important, even to the people that uh, interest about uh, um, about the uh, medical geology. This sand it's helped them, you know, in this, uh, some issue. Uh, yes. So uh, this is the really good point to talk. Okay. To the uh, Dr. Abdullah Memesh, uh, it's my pleasure to meet you finally. I'm, we always talking over the phone while I'm busy recently joining uh, SGS. Uh, please tell us what uh, the most geologist, junior geologist, while you working every day with the uh, junior geologist in, at uh, SGS, while you doing a lot of project and uh, during your daily work, what is the most trend area in geology recently? Yeah, uh, actually, was where we are in, in, in mining, and so the trend of the, the geology, and we must be trained in, in, in mining. mining. So, yeah, so the, the trend now is... It's all about mining. Because of that, today we are in this forum. Yes, but uh, the principle of, of mining, the, the geologist. Because without geologists, you will you'll not be uh, the mining. So the geology is the main uh, uh, bones of, of, uh, of mining. So uh, even uh, the big company of mining, they depend on, on the geology. So the geology, he, he showed the mining where he's put his foot to reach the resource of gold, cabars, or even in, in the copper rocks, as uh, Dr. Laboon said, we have uh, plenty of uh, economy resource, and even in the copper rocks, in the sand, even water, uh, oil, and gas, and even, the, as Dr. Naban said, the black sand. He, until now, nobody is concerned about the black sand <coughs> and the place of deposit, even have it in, in Red Sea Coast, or even in the Gulf, or in the Rab al Khali. Still, we have to ex ex explore the Rab al Khali and what is in, uh, beha uh, beneath the, the huge of, of, of sandstone. It looks like we have a lot of work to do in SGS. Yes. Um, finally, let me uh, conclude this with Dr. Uh, Abdul Aziz Al Laboon, and really it's a pleasure to have you today. Where, where we can find I know this information answer and all SGS people, but we, ha we, we need all the attendees today in this forum and the recording happening today to know where to find information and data about our mineral resources. Oh, great. Uh, the Minister of Industry and Mineral Resources got a huge data in terms of field reports, maps, books, and so on in their library in Jeddah. Uh, thousands of articles, thousands of reports, and they are, they are available. And I think I got slides showing some of these. Yes, please show us. We That's have some time, of the, guys. This That's is right. some of the geologic touristic attraction in Saudi Arabia. It's everywhere in sedimentary rocks, and igneous rocks, very nice features, and they are very nice to go and see. Oh, this is the books. For example, atlases. There are different types of, of addresses for minerals, industrial minerals, and metallic minerals, reports, books. They are available there. 
It can be used for investors, for students, and for public to go through some of these reports. Thank you so much, doctor. Thank you so much for the attendees. And it was a pleasure to have you all here. And I hope you enjoyed uh, the session. Thank you so much, doctor. Thank you.